Jordan Love obviously was the best quarterback from mid-November on in all of the NFL and is only going to get better. A note on Jordan Love, too, and I'm going to have a story on him and the Packers at go long ahead of the season. Speaking to somebody who, let's just say he works with him every day, is around this quarterback day in and day out, he he really pinpointed Jordan Love's strength as uh, that ability to mess up, screw something up, get fooled, and then not get fooled again. Like the defense would throw something at him, whether it's a, a coverage, maybe the way they roll the safety over on a particular passing concept, whatever the case may be. If he gets fooled once, he's not fooled again. And isn't that exactly what we saw last year where he was bad at times, very bad at times, the first half of the season. And his own GM at a, at that press conference in so many words says, all right, game time, Jordan Love. You need to prove you're our guy or we're going to find somebody else. And then he turned it on. He turned it on. And I, I think that, yeah, there's going to be coordinators out there, defenses out there who are going to try to figure out his weaknesses and take advantage of those weaknesses. But I think Jordan Love has, has an ability to figure shit out. I think that's his greatest strength. So they're not going anywhere. I I still like Chicago, though. I, I feel like Caleb Williams has a good enough coordinator in Shane Waldron. Wasn't always great in Seattle, but still had some answers built into that scheme. Comes from the Sean McVay tree, obviously. And is this, this is still a player's league, right? P- players win games. Coaches lose games. You say it all the time. Uh, and they've got... They've got the horses, right? They've they, and, and there's always going to be injuries, and I feel like with the horses they have, they can withstand an injury or two. I think for Chicago to take this step, I think Detroit is firmly – they're either the best, one of the top two teams in that conference. But Green Bay, I, I'm still I, – I get it with Jordan Love. I told you before, I just want to see a little more. I think there's still more for him to show consistency-wise – to really feel good because his he got away with some things last year that you can't always get away with. Now, that doesn't mean he's not doing some special things. He did. I need to make sure you're not going to do those other things that I saw that scare me with decision-making accuracy. There was some wild stuff I saw on that on, out of him early. To your point, November on, that was kind of insane. So I would say, take your best out, take your worst out, right? That's the old saying. It, it, it kind of holds true. Take your three best games out, take your three worst games out in the NFL. Well, that was when it used to be six, you know, and then find out the rest. Um, so f- my point of that was can, for Chicago to take that step quickly, if Jordan Love does have some inconsistency issues, then Chicago does become that, you know, right away becomes, or Minnesota, if they can knock on the door too, but in that division. That, that's how somebody could get above Green Bay if Jordan Love just plays, takes a step backwards, which you said you don't see coming. And it's hard to see it coming after what he did. It, it was hard to believe in the playoffs to think that there's going to be a regression. I'm always a little skeptical. I need to see a little more. Hey, it, it, it's about what you do in the playoffs at the end of the day, and that was a bad decision against San Francisco. Throw across your body. At that point, right when all, all you really need to do is is dink and dunk. In today's NFL, to get into field goal range and the two minute drill is it's kind of automatic, right? This is something that good quarterbacks are able to do. Let alone the best quarterbacks can do. Give them a couple timeouts, a few first downs, boom, you're in field goal range. The way these kickers are today as well. That's probably you know I know we're kind of. Um, Go in a different direction here too, but I was just talking to Connor Orr at uh, the MMQB podcast. I brought up this to him where, like, for all of the um, innovative play play call genius X and O, just brilliance out there in a Kyle Shanahan, a Sean McVay. It's like you get to those moments, especially in the Super Bowl. And what do you see? You see Bill Belichick against Sean McVay, just taking him to the woodshed, right? Three points. They, they take that Vic Fangio blueprint that the Bears used on that Rams team, bring it to the Super Bowl, and McVay is just 
so his pants are. I don't know what to do. Kyle Shanahan against Andy Reid. S- same thing. Get to overtime. Andy Reid and the Chiefs know what's up. They know the rules. The 49ers don't have a clue. <laughs> I mean, I, I get it. Like, you, you can cons- schematically figure everything out that you possibly could in a regular season, even for a couple playoff games. Uh, the best of the very best own that pressure packed moment, whether it's a coach or a quarterback. So as much as I love Jordan Love, you can't make that mistake in that game. You just you just can't.